Have you ever been a bit bored of CK3? Want to try something else out? Well, today, we are going to delve into my opinion, one of the most underrated mods in the whole of Crusader Kings 3, and it's only just about in the top 20 for CK3 mods on Steam. It is known as the Fallen Eagle mod, and is a total conversion mod set before the Crusader Kings 3 start date in 395. In my experience, these sorts of mods are by far the most interesting to play in Crusader Kings 3, and since the Royal Court expansion has come out, the mod team has showered us with gifts of what we expected to see when they released their 1.5 update. And we can see Roman shields, but we can also see now 3D costume designs of Roman soldiers, which will significantly immerse itself within the mod. Although it doesn't have the hype of some of the other mods, it nonetheless deserves some attention, which is why I'm making a video on it today. Also, at 100,000 subscribers, we are doing an old meetup, so make sure to click that button. Right, let's get into it. So first, let's get into some of the history behind the mod. Why was a 395 start date chosen, and what's significant about it? Well, this is known as the year of the consulship between two brothers. As the Roman Empire expanded into new and distant places, it got to the point where the central government could not rule faraway lands, and communications were spread to the absolute limit. Consequently, local rulers within the empire had significant control over their local regions, without much influence from Rome. Initially, controlling the western border of Rome was reasonably easy because it was relatively close to Rome itself. However, controlling both frontiers simultaneously during wartime was difficult. If the emperor was near the border in the east, then the chances were high that an ambitious young general would rebel in the west, and vice versa. This led to the Roman crisis in the 3rd century, which nearly meant the collapse of the Roman Empire, and we had the Gaelic and Palmyrene empires emerging. Had it not been for the Roman leader Aurelian, the empire would have certainly collapsed, and Aurelian, who despite the odds against him, was able to fight off his enemies. In 285, the emperor after Aurelian, Diocletian, realised the Roman Empire was impossible to maintain in its current form, and wanted to prevent another 50 year civil war. He therefore approved co-emperors, and split the Roman Empire into more manageable parts. This period in Roman history was known as the First Tetrarchy. This went alright for a while until it collapsed in 306 with the death of Constantius. His son, Constantine the Great, after fighting in a bloody civil war, ruled over the Roman Empire and reunified it in 324 AD. But despite the reunification, there was still a gap between the Latin West and the Greek East. In some ways, it seems the split in the empire was inevitable, given the complete difference in economic wealth, and the Western Roman Empire could not economically compete with the East, while it's impractical for the East to continually prop up the collapsing Western Roman Empire. Upon Constantine the Great's death, his sons again split up the empire three ways. The Roman Empire was briefly reunited again at the end of Theodosius the Great's reign, but this was not to last, and he died in 395. His two sons, which we can see here, therefore ruled over the eastern and western parts of the empire. The background to the start date therefore already gives you an interesting campaign. Will you be able to prevent the collapse of the western Roman Empire with the Germanic tribes on your border? So what happens after 395 AD, and is there any way to play it historically? Well, a similar trend to before followed, and the Western Roman Emperor, Honorus, was young and heavily relied on his general, Stilicho. Given the fact Honorus was young and inexperienced, Flavius Stilicho consolidated his power and therefore oversaw defending the Western Empire. He fought numerous campaigns, with the first being against the Visigoths under King Alaric. The Roman general was initially successful with his endeavours, but protecting Italy and defending the Rhine frontier had seriously depleted the Roman western forces. King Alaric, who was king of the Visigoths, had been fighting Rome for a long period of time, and is a brave, vengeful, diligent ruler in game. At the start of the game, he is also under the control of the Eastern Roman Empire. He is one of the key figures for the downfall of the Western Roman Empire, and after the execution of Stilicho in 408, the empire was vulnerable, 
and Alaric for Gothic king, accomplished something that had not been done in over eight centuries. He and his army entered the gates of Imperial Rome and sacked the city. Although the city, and for a time, the Roman Empire would survive, the plundering left a mark that could not be erased. The Goths would leave Rome and eventually find a new permanent home in Gaul, shortly after leaving the city, and Alaric would die of illness, but the pain of the Western Roman Empire would be felt over a few decades, and the Western Roman Empire would fall to the Germanic tribes. There's also apparently Attila the Hun in the mod, since he was born in 395, but I couldn't find him, and he's not exactly going to be the most interesting, given the fact he's just being born. I think we've covered the main historical relevant things for this mod. In the Pendragon update not so long ago, the mod team have also added some interesting Celtic characters that you can play as. Cole Hen the Old is the Duke of York, and was one of the last true Celtic kings of Britannia. With the Roman Empire occupied, and having significant problems at home, can you play as one of these Celtic characters and unite the people under your banner? These are just some of the handful of potential campaigns this mod offers. Going away from the history of the mod, is there something particularly good about the mod? Visually, the mod developers have put a shift in when it comes to the 3D design of the map. You see on the map in Rome numerous things from the Colosseum to other important Roman buildings. Same goes with Constantinople. The game also has unique mechanics for the time period, such as chariot racing, and you need to decide whether you support the green or blue team, improving relations with certain individuals, depending on who you support. In the Western Roman Empire, you also start off in an intense war, and have the option to abandon Britain to focus on your own internal problems closer to home, therefore making the mod a little more dynamic and different to the base game. Decisions in this mod are interesting, and give you a lot of ideas for potential campaigns, such as re-establishing the Roman Empire, or even taking over Caledonia, something the Romans could never do in historical reality. Another thing that is good is the interface. It's a small thing, and the artwork isn't going to be life-changing, but overall, it's still good to add, and makes a mod feel a bit different to the base game. The game also represents the struggle between the Hellenic and Christians, and with the Empire completely divided on religion, you must decide which route you want to take. I know Leif is obsessed with reviving Hellenism. This mod finally brings you a unique soundtrack, cultures, governments, and many other things, so that you really feel immersed within the game. And this is why people have enjoyed it so far. So to conclude, just how good is this mod? Well, there are certainly a lot of reasons to play it, but I think honestly, this mod still has a lot more to offer. Although the start date is interesting, I do think there should be more start dates added in. Perhaps an earlier one, when Rome was in a worse condition, or a slightly later one, when Attila the Hun comes of age and is fighting for Romans to the death. I think there could definitely be some more Roman mechanics, but for now, it's great what they've added so far, and I can only see this mod going up from here. Particularly when they continue to update the mod, and they might add some interesting mechanics to the German tribes and various empires around Rome at this time. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say though, and whether you are thinking of playing this mod, or if you think of sticking with other mods for now. Thank you guys for watching, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Shout out to our Patreons, J Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot, guys.